I just like to have fun. I'm 28 years old. I ain't trying to get over the hill and say, I got a bucket list in my life. I'm gonna knock everything out the box now. If I hurt your feelings, my bad. It's, it's just too sad for you. In the marriage vows, did you say, I'm gonna sleep with everybody else, or did you say, I was going to be true to her? She's the judge who gives rules on the law and life. She's intense with common sense. She's Judge Lynn Toller on Divorce Court, where real couples deal with real life. When Martina and Damerson married two years ago, Martina thought she'd wed the perfect man, but she soon found out that nothing is perfect. I'm here today because my husband of two years have cheated on me with over 30 women that I'm aware of, and I'm tired of it. I want a divorce. I don't think we need a divorce. We just need to work on communication issues that we have in the relationship. But Martina is firm in her belief that the damage has been done, so she is taking the couple's two children and walking away forever. Today on Divorce Court. All rise. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lynn Toller presiding. You may be seated. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here with Martina Robinson and Damerson Hutchinson. The two of you have been married for two years, together for six. You have two children, ages three and four, and there's some from a previous relationship. Ms. Uh, Robinson, you have brought Mr. Hutchinson here seeking $117, which is this specific amount you believe you have proof that he spent on a mistress. Yes, ma'am, I do. Indeed, that is. So before we get to that, Ms. Robinson, I'm going to ask you to tell me a little bit about your marriage and why we're here in divorce court today. Ma'am, Your Honor, I'm here today because my husband has cheated on me with over 30 women that I'm aware of, and we only been together six years. He's nothing but a liar and a cheater, and I want a divorce. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hey, don't you snap your fingers at your wife in front of no me. Dog. Have you lost your mind? No, I'm just putting her on her plate like she's no, supposed no, to be. No, 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 no. I'm in charge of this entire thing. You will treat her with dignity and respect here, no matter what you two do out in the world. Do you understand that? And that's the problem, you're And, you don't, inter and it. don't interrupt my flow, either. <laughs> 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 he does that all the time, Your Honor. He does stuff like that all the time. He always tries to snap his finger. He thinks he's above everyone else. He, feel, he figures that he's the king and everyone else is like his peasant. Like, well, when did you first learn that he had a wandering eye? The whole time we've been together, this had been occurring before we got married. Before you even got married. Gotta ask, Ms. Robinson, what about that led you to believe that he would make a good husband? I have kids, by Your Honor, and I was thinking that he would change. Marriage is supposed to change. You know, people do things that they don't usually do when they're not married because you're not obligated to each other. I want to marry him because I have kids by him is so, is so backwards. It is, mm -hmm. I want to have kids with someone that I'm married to, to because I've already made a determination <laughs> that he's someone who's worthy of me. I understand that, you with me? And you're right, you're right, you're right about I that. I mean, and I know it's too late. The cat's right. out of the bag. You already have children. But in case anybody is paying attention to me, please, please, <laughs> please. <laughs> Let's start working this thing in the right order. Mr. Hutchinson, how are you, sir? I'm doing good today. How are you doing, Yana? Fine. What do you say to her allegations that you are a serial cheater? Well, I mean, I just like to have fun. I'm 28 years old. I ain't, I ain't trying to get over the hill and say, I got a bucket list in my life. I'm gonna knock everything out the box now. If I hurt your feelings, my bad. It's, it's just too sad for you. You know, because I'm just gonna, I'm gonna live me and do for me. You feel me? And I, under, I do He's understand so you, and my question to you is this. That is indeed, uh, you have the right to do that. My question is, why lie to her and say, keep only unto you by marrying her? Hold what, I ain't, I ain't never told, the point of that? I, I never told a lie. I might have scratched the truth a little bit. Did you, did you, did you marry her? Line, yeah, I married her, but you know. the marriage vows, did you say, I'm going to sleep with everybody else, or did you say, I was going to be true to her? I mean, it's 2012, y'all, you got to look at it. It's a lot of open relationships out there now. Oh, my God. Did you tell her oh that? Oh, my God. No, I didn't did have you, to tell her that. Since then you lied. He only thinks about himself. I went out on a trip with my girls. We went out on a girls' night out. Your Honor, I come back, and a female writes me and lets me know that she took him to a comedy club, took him out to eat, and bought him an outfit. He hasn't even took, he never took me to a comedy club. We've been together six years. I've never been to a comedy club, but yet, you could go take another female that you know nothing about out and buy her and spend money on her. He don't do nothing at home. He got a job, but he, 
He take care of himself. He's selfish. Anything she's saying to me untrue, or you simply think, yeah, I did it, but I, but I'm, and I'm not sorry. I mean, no, I ain't sorry, cause um. See, that's if I, if I shoot, if I shoot you a that's line, you fall it. for it, John. Ain't nobody fault but you, and that you fail for it. But I'm that's just gonna the keep point. running my mouthpiece. I'm a man. I didn't fall so, for it. So, so <laughs> in your world, you can embezzle money because if if you shoot me a line about my money and I fall for it and give you money for investment, and you're really just a thief. That's all. That's all my bad. <laughs> that's your fault. You really? know, it, that's it's life. It's life. It, it's, it's life. It's part of life. Really? Some, some people, Selfish, some people don't get deed over some man. You know, like. If I look at a female, I'm gonna make you think you look better than some celebrity or supermodel. You uh -huh. know, if you fall for them little lies, I'm telling you, oh my bad. Yeah, I might take you out to dinner. Mm -hmm. I might buy you a little outfit, but I don't count that for real. Because all, all in all, I love my wife. You know, I'm gonna try to do whatever I make my man work. My loyalty leads with her. You, you understand that? Okay. You, if you're gonna do whatever makes your marriage work, what do you think? Just, just make a guess what that might entail. To I mean, throw something out to like, me that, that might done. help save your marriage. It's not even Let's take, make some, some counseling. Because she need counseling. Can't you you need counseling. Can't Come she on, tell man, you she you, you see what I'm saying? Can you tell she look iffy right now? No. You see, because... Um, that she's what? A little iffy. She kind of off the rocker a little bit, you know? Uh oh, you know? okay. <laughs> I'm off you, the rocker. You, you understand? He she, don't even she know how to cheat you. She don't understand. Every time he cheat, he get caught. This a man word, you know? It's a man word, I can't help but some men don't know how to put their wives in play like I do, you know? Yo, in place? You need the one. You need to be the one putting in place. Putting his wife in play. I mean, Come on you know, now, I'm not your child, I'm your wife. You know, like, man no, no, no. Mr. Hutchinson, you are fascinating bag, me. The, the female bags the man up, you know. Uh huh. The, the, the man said, make calls all the shot. The female take care of the kids and do everything around Stop. the house. You know. Uh -huh. So I like basically your husband. He's, probably he's got... digging himself such a huge hole. You need to say nothing at all. Oh, okay. I'm just okay. just letting him dig and dig, and soon he'll hit China. Well, <laughs> I'm for. Yeah. I'm for yeah. it. Okay. When divorce court continues, does Damerson have an excuse? And we take a couple of pictures. Why did my husband, now remind you, this is my husband, put my nude pictures on the internet? Breakups are painful. Let me help. Call toll free at 1 877 311 2222. Or visit our website at divorcecourt.com and become a fan at facebook.com slash divorcecourt. Divorce Court is back with the case of Martina Robinson, who wants to divorce her husband of two years because she says he has cheated with more than 30 women. But can Judge Lynn stop Damerson in his tracks? What are you going to tell your daughter about men like you? Let me tell you how much respect this guy has for me, Yana. On Thanksgiving, we went to spend the holidays with our family, me and my kids. He didn't want to go. He wanted to stay at home by himself. He wanted to mope around. So I come back and we take a couple of pictures. Why did my husband now, remind you, this is my husband, put my nude pictures on the internet in front of, so everybody could see. I'm thinking that I could take pictures with him because he's my husband. They're going to stay in the privacy of the home. No, that's, dead, that's the day of honest God truth, Yana. You need to get a hobby. That's not going to work out. with a guy like, that you know you can't trust as far as you can see. I see it now, Yana. That's why I want out. Never I'm tired put of Never put anything shit. on film. He worse than a person in the street. I literally might as well be talking to somebody I don't know off the internet. He worse than them. I can't trust them at all. Is he a good daddy? He's a good daddy. What are you going to tell your daughter about men like you? <laughs> run, <laughs> run, because that's what no, you should I'm tell them. Basically, I'm going to just tell her, you know, learn how to recognize when someone's telling you a lie, you know? Uh -huh. And well, he, if, he, he, he if, she, much... if she brings home a junior you, what will you tell her about him? Well, I mean, if he sold it to her and she bought it, I can't do too much to her because that's what she just takes. She just so, so you people. would say, okay, baby, you know, you I'm going to let him screw you over. I'm going to let him treat you like nothing. I'm going to let him take your money, take your time, well, abuse your love. I'm still talking. Abuse your love, sleep around, give you a, a sexually transmitted disease because he's, he's everywhere. You're going to allow that. That's going to be okay with you. That's who you are. No, because basically I'm going I'm to let, you know, see, this the problem. Nobody said that when a women, when women manipulate men, it's nothing wrong with it. But see now, when a man start manipulating a woman, you got a problem with it. Do you call That's what you're how doing? You do manip manipulate. No, 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 no. Let me let me ask you. Okay. How are you manipulating it? Manipulation requires when you don't get some subtlety. It's when you don't. It get requires caught. getting people to do things you don't. They don't think they want to do without any. Oh. You know, it's not obvious. It's it it, it, it requires exactly. some, it, it requires some intellect. I I don't see that coming what, from what, over there. It, you don't see no intellect coming from me. 
the I way you it. manage women, I don't see it as um, intellectually well, it's, inspired. Well, everything I do is a, it's a thought through process. I'm going to play my game. Obviously not, because you always get caught. Sleep. No, I'm gonna, Obviously I ain't thinking I get caught because I want to. It just you, you, adds, you, you it adds to it. You get caught because you want to. That's stupid. That's Robinson, you say he's addicted to porn and sex. Uh, yeah, he is. I, I, I mean, anything we say at this 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 juncture is 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 an asterisk to idiocy, but... Um, <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. Y'all, he... Go ahead. I mean, like, he he's addicted to... That's... When he cheats, that's what he do. He'll sleep with anybody. He don't care how you look. You can look. You could be 400 pounds. You could be. He don't Big have a fight, y'all. He'll too. talk Big and women sleep too, with y'all. anybody. He'll sleep with anybody, y'all. I've done all I can do. I mean, I, as you can see, he's no hope. There's no hope with uh -huh. him. He, I even on what his... made you think there was hope at any time? Did you? <laughs> did, I mean, I'm just can't You're understand right, that. Part. You're right. You're right. Well, I mean, is he like to be harder on? what he does than he really is. I mean, he had to have been better than this, right? I mean, when I first met him, he was. Like, he did the sweet talk. He was being nice to my, my oldest son just before we had kids. He was, but that just lets you know that people put on the front before you get into a Well, you say he's addicted to t porn and sex, but then you also say that when you try to become intimate and sexy, you are rejected. Explain exactly. that to Exactly. I me. got an example for you, Your Honor. I, on his birthday of last year, I bought a lingerie outfit and a little game because I know he likes porn and sex, so I'm trying to please my husband. Right. Why did he who, tell who, me who that's a lingerie? Who I will get to Mr. Hutchison, I will hold get hold to up. Don't be snapping your face when I told you one Sit time. Down. Like, really? See, like the puppy. Go ahead. Anyway, Your Honor, um, yeah, I bought lingerie, and he told me that that was a Valentine's Day gift. He told me that that was a gift to me, not him. Like, he didn't even want it. It's like he don't even appreciate my body. To be honest with you, I look better than him. He the one look like he weighed about 400 pounds, to be seriously, but he didn't even appreciate my gift. I spent time and effort. When Divorce Court continues, can Judge Lynn save this marriage as Damerson has asked? You didn't know your marriage was in trouble until one of my people called you and said that your wife called. I don't think my marriage in trouble. Matter of fact, I well, know why my marriage Why do you think you're trouble. here? If you would like your case heard on Divorce Court, call us toll free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com and follow us on Twitter at Divorce Court. Divorce Court returns with the case of Martina Robinson, who charges that her husband is addicted to porn. But is this interest bad enough to send their marriage spiraling into divorce? Mr. Hutchinson, you think like you act like you got some sense if you've come up here? Do you think so? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Do you not find her alluring? I do, Your Honor, but it's, she knows. She's been with me for, since 2006. Right. You know, my birthday, I want materialistic stuff. I want some cologne, I want an outfit or well, something body. like that. I don't... You want things, yeah, not, I mean, not, I can, not I can have I can have your body 365 days out the year. If uh, I want it, you can you my wife. So why, why would I want a, something like that on my birthday? You want to you want to remain married. Is that right? Yes. I mean, you you don't want to get a divorce. Yes, I, well, even if she, she wants to, I just, <laughs> I just take a horse carriage ride downtown or something. She, and, and, and she'll be back spent, right with back right rich. You know how she's going to be right for dad. Mrs. Robinson, if all, of all the things Mr. Hutchinson said today, the one that I do believe is that one. He's nothing without me, right, He don't have but, nothing. But I, I, yeah, gave, some, I gave some alligator tears and did a little big with some little slow music playing in the background and whoop whoop. There she no, goes. She's back on the team. No, no, Ms. No. Robinson, on, listen now. to me. If you don't hear anything else yes, I say today, I see women that come in here all the time hurt. Stop talking. I got you. Hurt crying, upset, have ever had tragedy, <laughs> rudeness, horror, anything. I mean, they've been treated like last Thursday's trash. And then a week later, we call them up. Yeah, I let him back in. No. <laughs> I mean, no, that's no. not the point. I need him to leave. I need a divorce. Like, he can't, I can't just make him leave out my house. It's either me move or it, they, I mean, I can't make So you just leave. want the house. It's a matter of, of legal logistics no, for you. No, it ain't even that. I want him to leave. I don't want to have to move me and my kids around again and take them out of school. I want him to leave. Mm -hmm. I get you. I get you. I get you. Mr. Hutchinson, my, my people told me this, and I didn't believe it, so I'm going to ask you. Okay. You didn't know your marriage was in trouble until one of my people called oh, no, you and my said that your no wife called. Trouble, I don't think my marriage is in trouble. Matter Are you fact, saying, I know well, why my do you think you're here? 
she just she just going through a fade. Like I said, when I spend a, spend a few dollars or something, she's just, I just, I just, she just going through a fade. And right she'll now. come right around. <laughs> Everything no. gonna be good after if Valentine's Day. <laughs> If that was the case, come on, I'd be realistic. Come you on, know, man. it ain't no fate. I want you gone. I told you one time, no, I'm it's, through it's, it's, with it. I'm I understand you call yourself King Hunt. Yes, exactly. Explain, my explain that nomenclature for me. Because that's what I am. I'm a king. I was born but a king. Why More Hutt? like a peasant. I know King Tut, but what is King <laughs> Hut? Look, I feel like this him. I was put on the earth to satisfy people and women. <laughs> no matter what woman it is, if I get in contact with her and get you in a conversation and get you to laugh and whatnot, I'm gonna get what I want out you eventually. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh. You see, you, you, got, you got people saying, no, no, this and that and the third, but it's a thousand ways to pimp. When Divorce Court continues. He took her out to eat, bought her a dress. Do you deny that these charges went for a woman other than your wife? Divorce Court returns with the case of Martina Robinson and Damerson Hutchinson who are divorcing each other after only two years of marriage. Can I tell you what this baller did? Please. The last thing, the last straw for me was when we were going through hard times at my house or whatever. He went home to see his parents. He was depressed, so I let him go home to see his parents, Your Honor. And he went down there. Mind you that he didn't buy me nothing for my birthday, but he went to see another female, Your Honor. This is two hours from where we live in now. He drove two hours to see another female. Didn't even see his daddy, Your Honor. Bought her a dress. I mean, he bought her a birthday dress, took her out to eat a spot time with her, not even counting the gas that it took to go down there, Your Honor. Well, I, I, okay. And at the same time, that's money that he took out of our mouth. Like, we're struggling. We... Why don't you tell me what, what that $117 represents? Okay, Your Honor. He spent $27 on her dress. Uh -huh. He spent $60. How do you know okay. these things? I got the best ever. Okay, well, no, 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 no. You stay right here. Okay. <laughs> I was going to Y'all stay thing. over there. Okay. And then, I stay and over then, here. And then you see what I mean? She rambled. She will travel. You see how she rambled through my mail and stuff now? See, I didn't and even you, know that it was in the mail until she pulled my face. Hey, hang on. Stop. Have you seen this? Yeah, I've seen it. If you don't stop. Okay, I guess. Do you deny that these charges went for a woman other than your wife? No, I don't, I don't You deny don't it. deny it. Don't you, deny you own it. You, you, own because that's who you are. That's what you do. Yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, that's, that's what dad right. do. That's what huh? dad do. That's what who do? That's what dad to do. Ask him what he told no, me. No, I'm not asking anybody anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell you a few things, and then, I, okay, and then I'm going to go. Okay. Can I say one thing? No, 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 no. Don't, don't no, pause no, her no, head no, too no, much no. now. Don't pause no, her head no, too much for me now. Joe, if you just stand over there and keep him company, because I don't want him to speak anymore. I have nothing to say to him. I'm be honest with you. I have to listen to it all the time. I'm all done over there. You know, M Ms. Robinson? Yes, ma'am. To the extent you let him treat you like yesterday's garbage, which you are, have allowed him to do so far, you're teaching your daughter that this is all you can get from a man. Please, if you cannot leave for your own well-being, leave for hers. So I'm asking you, as a grown woman, a woman who is beautiful, a woman who has two Thank children, you. a woman who is employed and got some sense about herself, you step away from whatever seven-cent line he's trying to sell you and keep stepping because he has no motivation to do better. He doesn't have the capacity to do better because he doesn't even have the esteem to be a man, right. and only a man can be married. Yes, ma'am. Right? Yeah, you're right, you're right. Having said, said that, I will say this. I wish you all the best, Ms. Robinson. If you do not, if you get confused, soft, or tired, we're gonna give you a copy of this tape. We go, play it every morning and, and, and get some. Since boom, ba, ra, 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 he got to go, okay? Right. Okay. And in addition to that, when you do leave, you will take $117 Thank with you. Thank you, Your Honor. It's so order. All rise. Parties may leave the courtroom. Damerson says that he and Martina are trying to work on their relationship because they have three young children at stake. Martina responds that Damerson talks about changing, but she hasn't seen any signs of that yet. Damerson says Martina continues to talk about leaving him, and he claims he is trying to quit cheating and social networking. But Martina doesn't believe him. The only reason how come I'm here is because my wife, the last couple of years, she's become unbearable to be around. Him and this woman is eye to eye. They haven't took their eyes off each other at all. She's the judge who gives rules on the law and life. She's intense with common sense. She's Judge Lynn Toller on Divorce Court.
where real couples deal with real life. 46-year-old Danny met 35-year-old Samara one day when he happened to see her walking past his window. Danny believed it was fate and that Samara was the woman of his dreams. Now, after three years of marriage, he's worried that she might become his worst nightmare. If it ain't Samara's way, way, it's, no way. it's not going to happen. I don't care what kind of expression I got on my face, he feel like it's something wrong. Oh, is, is something wrong with you? What's wrong? Leave me alone. Danny says he's done with Samara's constant nagging. Today on Divorce Court. All rise. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lynn Toller presiding. You may be seated. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Danny Worley and Samara Hopkins. Mr. Worley and Ms. Hopkins, the two of you have been married for three years. Uh, you don't have any children together, but you do both have children from previous relationships. Uh, Mr. Worley, you are done and out the door. You ready to roll, call it a day, end the situation, put a period on the matter entirely. Ms. Hopkins, you'd like to save it. But if you can't, you want to leave with $1,012.24 worth of credit card bills. You say he's run up. He's going to go. He's going to pay the bills when he does. That's your point of view. Uh, Mr. Worley, you say you don't owe it and that you should leave without having to pay it. Uh, Mr. Worley, I'm going to start with you. Why don't you tell me why you think, why you want a divorce, why you want to leave Ms. Hopkins, even though she doesn't want to leave you? The thing reason I come I'm here is because my wife, the last couple of years, she's become unbearable to be around. I mean, as far as we could sit around and we, we, we usually when people get mad at each other, mm -hmm. okay, later on you can cool off or whatever and, and everything will be fine. But that ain't what happens in, in, in my household, okay? No. She gets mad at me or whatever. Right. And instead of her just leaving it alone because I want to go and cool off or, or relax or whatever, she'll stay there and she'll come, like I'll be laying in the bed or something, she'll walk over to the bed, sit on the bed, smoke her little cigarette, you know, and then she'll just be sitting there talking about everything that's going on. He think he gonna do this, he think this to gonna happen. I talk out loud, but... Your Honor, because he doesn't listen. So you talk to yourself on the bed in his earshot. <laughs> because he so doesn't you listen. So you can say, he gonna do this, no, he gonna do that. No, it's, think... just, it's just that I, I'm talking, I'm, talk, I'm talking about the situation that I wanna talk about because he's, he has ears, so he can hear. So I feel like if I'm saying it and he's hearing it because if I try to come to him and talk to him, he doesn't talk to me. It's like, oh, I don't wanna talk, I can't take this no more, running out the door, staying weekend. You know. Let me ask you this, Mr. Worley. She says she speaks to herself in your earshot because she can't speak to you directly. Is that accurate? Well, yes. Yes, okay. because... Now, why, why is it difficult for you to speak to her directly? Why can't that happen? Because I have a conversation with my wife uh -huh. and I could tell her something, okay? Something that's real important or something that needs to be held on to, okay? Right. She'll hear it, but that's it. You know what I mean? I mean, there's no actions behind what I say. Like, if I say, okay, Samara, I need uh, all these things done uh, for, for, before we go do whatever, okay? Your Honor, he treats me I like a child, okay? He doesn't want me to just go do it. It's like, I'm doing it already, it's already done, but he's going to go and, and inspect to see, okay, he's picking I've been at in the military, yeah, Your Honor. I, I that's can... what I do. I mean... She wants to have a conversation, Mr. Worley. She doesn't want to just obey orders. There's a difference. I can understand that. I can understand that. But see, there's a difference also when somebody's already said something, you know, for I, I'm not really an authority figure in this household. She's uh -huh. the one that actually, if something's going on or something's going to get done, she's the one that actually gets the final say, the final whatever's going to go down, it's going to be Samara's way. He does. If it ain't Samara's way, way, it's, no way. it's not going to happen. That's not true, I'm going to be Honor. sitting there arguing He's mad, the one that's outside doing whatever it is I feel like I want to do because she ain't going to hear nothing that I got to say. That's why we can't have a conversation. She says, I won't be hearing nothing she says, but it's only because if I have a conversation with you and I expect some progress out of the conversation and it don't happen, mm -hmm. I'm done with the conversation. He's controlling. Do, Ms. Hodgson, let me ask you this. And I want to talk about the conversation because 99% of, of the couples that I see in there have no clue what a conversation is. He believes that a conversation is someone speaks and another person responds in a certain manner. Am I accurate? Correct, correct. Okay. 
Now, you know that's wrong, right? I, I, I know now. That, I know that, that, people have that probably told me it. that, but I didn't hear it because my point of view to me is things should be very simple. One, two, three. One, okay? two, three. You can't skip one. I mean, you can't skip from one to three. Okay, you have to go through two. When he has a conversation with you, how does it roll? Okay, I can come to him and, you know, if it's not come eat or, um, you know, if it's, I got, if it's not two words saying to him, like come, come eat, on. then it's, if I come with a, a full sentence, oh, it's, it's just, too much. oh, what are you talking about? Oh, I'm like, oh, I'm trying to talk to you. But if I say come eat, oh, he know, what to, he know how to do that. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to do that. <laughs> All right, well, we'll, we'll, we'll get that. back to the, the conversation and the communication in a moment. Mr. Worley, you also say you have a problem with the manner in which she raises or deals with her children. Why don't you explain that to in, me? In our house, there's a rule for her and her son, and there's mm -hmm. a rule for me and my two kids. When divorce court continues, is it Danny's way or the highway? It's because y'all took too long to do it. That's what I'm talking exactly. about. Everything should be, everything should just take that long to do. You, you already know it needs to be done. Is your mate getting on your last nerve? Be a guest. Call toll-free at 1-877-311-2222. Or visit our website at divorcecourt.com. And become a fan at facebook.com slash divorcecourt. Divorce Court is back with the case of Danny Worley, who wants to divorce his wife, Samara, because he claims she doesn't respect his leadership at home. She ain't gonna hear nothing that I got to say. That's why we can't have a conversation. Give me an example of when you feel she's allowed him I'm to get away with something. I'm gonna tell you right now. I, I tell him all, every, every time, take out the garbage. Okay, that's plain as I can get. Take out the garbage. You know the day Tuesday, the garbage gotta go out. Okay, sometimes they get right to it, you know what I'm saying? But other times, I have to come back in the house, like if I come in from school or something, I come in the house and stuff ain't done, then she got a problem, but he always yelling, I come home and stuff is out of order. Because if ain't nothing the way So it's, it's, is it all the kids' jobs to take out the garbage, the or do, do you pick one? It's, it's is it a two, rotation? It's the two, the two boys. boys. The, the two boys, mm -hmm. and the garbage doesn't always go out. And it doesn't yes, it always does. go out. Yes, it does. Not, and and not, do not you get when angry when the garbage doesn't go out? What happens? You, you come home, the garbage is still there. And I'm a, I, as soon as I get home and the garbage is still there, I have a whole issue. I say, <laughs> look here. I done, been, I done told you all day that this needs to be done. Y'all already know what y'all supposed to do. Y'all come in here, y'all done sit around, you're playing with your mama, or you're playing the games, you're doing whatever else. And you, you didn't do your chores. You didn't do nothing you're supposed to That's do. That's not true, Your Honor. Mr. Hopkins, look, that, I, I'm going to say this. My husband has, on more than one occasion, told me, don't ask the boy. Tell him to do it. Don't have a conversation. Don't discuss it. Give him an order. Do you, do you, a little bit? No. Yes. Yeah, this is, this is what happens. First of all, I don't let them take the garbage out until night. That's the way I, I let them get all the garbage from upstairs, downstairs, whatever. If I'm still cooking or I'm doing something and I still need garbage to go in there, then I don't let them take it out until I tell Because it's them a logistical matter. You know it makes what I mean? more sense. Right. So when he comes in and it's not done, it's because I told him to wait. It's because y'all took too long to do it. That's what I'm talking exactly. about. Everything should be, everything should just take that long to do. You, you already know it needs to be done. You get up in the morning. I you, do everything, listen, you, She get he up in the morning, she knows she needs to brush her teeth, right? She be up way before dawn brushing her teeth. Okay, why can't the same thing go into what because I'm talking you know, about? Hang on, I'm, 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 see, here we go. Most people don't know, understand what a conversation is. Let me explain to you what a conversation is. A conversation is a statement of position and a need, a desire, or a want. And then the other person makes sure she understands what that need, desire, or want is and responds to it in a certain manner. And then the two of you discuss why you want to do what you do, how you want to do it, and then figure out a way to get it done. Mr. Worley, you seem to think a conversation is I state you do. Right, exactly. And, and what she told me right here was... You stated about the, you want the garbage out now. She gave me a very logical reason why she waits till the end of the day. And you, and you don't seem to think, hmm, makes sense. Let's do it like that. How come that doesn't make sense to you? It doesn't make sense to me because why sit around and wait? 
if you got garbage. She just told you. Because later because on, there's going to be something here that I need to go get, go take no, whatever. No, no, you didn't. You, now, this is another thing. I, I'm going to give you something when you leave here. Please it's, do. It, it's a book. It's called Making Marriage Work. I got a whole chapter on the two of you. Okay. Actually, I got two <laughs> chapters on the two of you. Okay. Here's the thing. You see a situation a certain way. You have to be able to get next to the notion you just might be wrong. <laughs> when Divorce Court continues, is Samara being insecure? If I'm just show up on the TV. Okay, I'm watching, she watching. First thing she'll do is... <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm looking at her like, hold on, I'm, I can't watch TV now. If you would like your case heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com and follow us on Twitter at Divorce Court. Divorce Court returns with the case of Samara Hopkins, who claims her husband treats her like a child. But will Judge Lynn be able to help this couple save their marriage? Mr. Worley, you seem to think a conversation is I state you do. Tell me other matters that you find distressing when seeking to speak with and live with this woman. Okay, other matters. We can sit and, like, we'll be watching TV, yeah. okay? And all of a sudden, it'll be a naked lady or something to pop on the TV. Uh-huh. Okay, here I am. What channel are you watching? <laughs> <laughs> Any, any channel okay, nowadays, ahead, you know what I'm saying? All right. But, uh, yeah, we, we'll be watching TV. So we're watching TV and something just show up on the TV. Okay, I'm watching, she watching. First thing she'll do is... <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm looking at her like, hold on, I'm, I can't watch TV now. I mean, that's not. Do you, I mean, do you give him? Do you give him the funny eye because there's a naked woman on the television? No, no, no. He, this, he, now he, you he know that is totally he, he tells false. Me, he tells me that I'm accusing him about anything. Okay, it could be like we, you know, I feel like I feel like he he does things just to see. It. I don't care what kind of expression I got mm -hmm. on my face. He feel like it's something wrong. Oh, is, is something wrong with you? What's wrong? Leave me alone. You know, this, that, and the other. So what you're telling me, he sees everything you do as related to him. Mm -hmm. Okay. We go on a cruise, Hang on. and there's a lady oh, that's singing. Her and her husband is a, a band or something there. We step in and dance, and the lady come over mm -hmm. with the microphone and get us to sing with her. We start singing with her and everything, and we all up into it. It's a Marvin Gaye song. So when we left up out of there... Good <laughs> we, music, no. <laughs> it's good when, we, when we left her body there, the first thing she did when we got in the foyer, mm, why you have to be all up in her face? <laughs> I said, hold on, we, we are entertainers. Right. That's what we do. Ms. Ms. Hopkins, do you get funny about no, his first of all, performances? No, first of all, she's singing the song and we're singing to each other. Right. As far as we were talking, mm -hmm. we were singing, yes, you know, yes, uh -huh. sounding yes. good, this and that. We're, you know, getting into it with her or whatever. All of a sudden, he didn't know I was right here. It seemed like to me because like you now, just disappeared. Now him and this woman is eye to eye. They haven't took their eyes off each other at all. And there she's coming toward him and they're singing a woo. I'm like, okay, it's but I'm still standing here. Hang on, just a minute. <laughs> Isn't that part of it though? Yes. Well, it is. And okay, it, it would have been it would have been one thing for okay you to do that, and you know it, you do it for a second. This woman is way over there where you are, so they're eye contacted all the way until she gets right here. So he ain't turning back my way like I'm not there anymore. Period. Yeah. But it wasn't that just a moment in entertainment time. Yes. It was like yeah we hit a note, we got a we thing, we're moving. In. That's exactly what it was. She knows she you're there, he knows you're there. Time. They're in front of everybody. But see, this is this is all the time. This ain't just. That's a just how I am. I this speak. This is all the time. When I, we, Yana, he speaks to me like a child. He speaks to me like a child. Give me an example and, of uh, of the manner in which he speaks to you that you find uh, disrespectful. Oh, just he yells and screams at me all the time. Like, okay, he's very con controlling and mm -hmm. and like one time we're we're he's sitting down there and he's watching TV and he's drinking his beer or whatever. He has to use the bathroom. Okay, that's fine. Someone's in the bathroom. He goes upstairs. He's banging on the door, banging. <laughs> Hurry up out of there. This, that, and the <laughs> other, right? And so you know they're hurrying up out for him to go in. When he comes out. He goes, um, yeah, for now on, y'all come downstairs and tell me when you gotta go to the bathroom <laughs> so, uh, so I can go first.
Worley. If I have to. <laughs> Excuse me, Miss Worley. Hey. Tell me she made that hey, up. No, that's true. That is true. <laughs> that's true. I, I appreciate your honesty. I'm, I'm, I do. I'm, I'm going to tell you why I did that. Please. Because anybody know when you're watching TV, all right? Yeah. And you done drunk a lot or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes you got to go right now. You can't just wait and, and, and you know. So I told them when I'm watching the games or whatever, Say, tell me y'all finna go in the bathroom. You go in the bathroom. That way I know I ain't got to go up there yeah, yet. Somebody else is already in there. So, so but if you I, don't I, tell I, me, and then I come upstairs he, and I got to go, I'm, man, what is y'all doing? He got, Get out of here. He, he, you know? He, that's why I asked Mr. Worley, how old are you, sir? Well, I'm 46, man. Now, by 46, you should have your bladder control situation <laughs> together. When divorce court continues, are Danny's expectations too high? Three, four times a week would be perfect for me. When we first got together, it was eight hours the first day. Divorce Court returns with the case of Danny Worley and Samara Hopkins, whose marriage is on the skids. Mr. Worley, I'm going to ask you, you say your wife, Ms. Hopkins, withholds sex from you oh, in yes. order to, to, Honor, to garner compliance. That, can I? Before we get I, into I'll that, get back to you. we talk M about Mr. that? Mr. Worley, Mr. Worley, explain that to me. Because, see, I'm a very aggressive person in bed. I love to make love to my wife. She is just that type of person, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, that now, I want Now, when you say aggressive, well, what does I like that to mean? Grab, now, don't I like say to too much. I, I, I know. I, I like to grab. I like to touch. I'm, you know, I'm... I'm, I'm, I'm you you know? all about it. Yeah. I, you know, I, I do what I do when I'm in there. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I, 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 ain't, I ain't in there. I, 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 I know you didn't mean it like it sounded, but I was deep. I ain't in there just to be in there, is what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm having fun. You're right. Woo! That is not true. <laughs> that, oh, so Ms. you don't Hopkins, do it like that? But, but you're saying that she doesn't want... She's not as interested in intimacy it, it, as you are? Yes, yes. My whole thing with that is I, I could three, four times a week would be perfect for me. You know what I'm saying? When we first got together, it was eight hours the first day. He wasn't yelling you know at saying? me all the time no. in the beginning. But that's the way it's always is in the beginning. Well, you know, it, kept it does going, taper though, off That's why we years. ended up married is what I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> that and the way she cooked, I mean, come on. Yeah, Mr. Worley? I think you love this woman. Oh, yes. And I think that you should stay with this woman. Mm -hmm. And I, but, but, no, no, no. But before you do, you need to do a couple of things. Okay. Mr. Worley, you have to get an idea that a woman is a partner and not an employee. That's the, that's the thing that's killing you. That, and she wants to talk, 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 talk because you don't listen at all the first time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Women need to use fewer words and men need to increase the number of words they're willing to listen to. Yeah. That is what that is. You are two good people. I like you both. I want you two to learn how to have a conversation. I want you to learn what it means to be in the lead, because that's what you want to do. It doesn't really matter. <laughs> And, 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 but do so effectively. Mm -hmm. I hope you get better. I'm going to call you in six months and, and find out what's going on. My best of luck to you. I'm not giving anybody any money, because if you do have an extra $1,000, go on marriage counseling, because you yeah, two need to stay together. Thanks. I like you both. Thank you. There, this matter is adjourned. All right. Parties may leave the courtroom. I went up there and told them people, I love you, girl. OK, then act like you love me. Well, let's do it. Come on, let's go. No. You gotta do better than that. You gotta show me. That ain't showing me. You got more to do. <laughs> I love her. I will always love her. Hopefully, we will come to terms. Don't Thank be so you, controlling. Judge Lynn Toller. Don't be so controlling. Uh, listen to me more. Do things that you're supposed to do as my husband. She said, and listen to her more. Don't be controlling. And she needs a little bit more effort from me. Yeah, exactly. I want you to see what you did to your wife. I want you to see what you did to the woman that you said you were going to love, honor, and cherish. What she did was take your son's daughter into her life and cared for him. And what you did is take your vows, throw them out your window, and skittled off with a kindergartner. She's the judge who gives rules on the law and life. She's intense with common sense. She's Judge Lynn Toller on Divorce Court.
where real couples deal with real life. They're back. A year ago, Luz and Carlos Ortiz found themselves in Judge Lynn's divorce court after Luz discovered her husband Carlos had impregnated their live-in babysitter, LaShonda. Though the Ortizes now have gone their separate ways, Luz says the divorce isn't working because Carlos and LaShonda make unexpected visits to her home to see Carlos's biological granddaughter, while continually asking Luz for help and financial favors. She has custody of your grandchild, correct? That's correct. While he was in Puerto Rico, as a matter of fact, his family were calling me. They called me several times to say, if you ever leave Miss Beckett, please, would you please take him back? And I said to them, no way. Luz, Carlos, and LaShonda are back before Judge Lynn with powerful new testimonies. Today on Divorce Court. All rise. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lynn Toller presiding. You may be seated. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here with Luz Ortiz and Carlos Ortiz and Ms. LaShonda Beckett. Mr. and Mrs. Ortiz, you came here about a year ago, got a divorce. The divorce is final. Uh, I gave Mrs. Ortiz a judgment in the amount of $11,000. I'm going to ask about how much of that was paid. Mr. Ortiz, you're here with Ms. Beckett because you two, you used to be the babysitter of the Ortiz grandbaby. Yes. But now you are the mother of Mr. Ortiz's most recent child. Yes, I am. And before we get started, I want to take a look at what happened last time, and then we're going to find out why we're here this time. Look at her. I want you to see what you did to your wife. I want you to see what you did to the woman that you said you were going to love, honor, and cherish. What she did was take your son's daughter into her life and cared for him. And what you did is take your vows, throw them out your window, and skittled off with a kindergartner. Mm -hmm. I was warm. I was warm because you didn't seem to be at all regretful. Well, Your Honor, I, I have been regretful. I have been uh, remorseful about it, but I cannot turn back the time. And at that moment, time had to continue forward. And I have to continue with my life just like Luz has to continue with, with her, her life. life. OK, very good point, very good point. I'm going to say, you're back here today, Ms. Ortiz, because you want some money. And Mr. Ortiz, you have a request of me as well. That's correct, Which is Your a Honor. very important request, and I want to take it seriously. We won't talk about it now. I'll talk about all of that at the end. But it has to do with the child. She has custody of your grandchild, That's correct? That's correct. That all I right. supported her. But you her didn't fight that. You wanted her to have custody That's of correct. your grandchild. That's okay. correct. Ms. Ortiz, why don't you tell me what's going on now? Well, first of all, I want to remind him that, in fact, he did not pay the ruling. How much did he pay, if any at all? Because I awarded you $11,000. Well, except, uh, except, except... Hang on, I paid... I awarded $11,000. How much do you say he has paid? He only paid $1,000 of it, and, and I had to take back the vehicle. Mr. That, Mr. Ortiz? That was the agreement. That was agreed upon uh, among us that either she gets $11,000, oh. I'll keep the car, or she keeps the car and keeps paying for the note. Okay. So, so you decided to give her the car... That's correct. Did, did you make no, that agreement decided, afterwards? He decided to give me back the car only because they were moving away to Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. well, and that car but did you agree that that would be in lieu of paying the judgment? Yes. Did you agree? I would take See, back now, the Ms. car. See, now, Ms. Ortiz, you, you can't And get, I agree with that. I agree with that 100%. You I can't get up. weak and just do whatever and then come back here and ask me to undo the whatever that you just did. What has happened as far as your family is concerned since you left here? Carlos, I told him he should start and try and get a new lease on life. Mm -hmm. So they moved out to Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. Well, before we I did bet, all that, let, Your Honor, let, just Mr. Ortiz, second. I'm going to get to you. Let me finish with yeah, her, and then I'm going to turn to you and, and allow you to, to address everything. Please, let's not, Your Honor. Ms. Mr. Ortiz, I can handle this. You will get a full opportunity to be heard. We're going to finish her, and then I'll get to you. Go ahead. While he was in Puerto Rico, as a matter of fact, his family were calling me. They called me several times to say, if you ever leave Miss Beckett, please, would you please take him back? And I said to them, no way. 
He's gone His out of my life. His family was calling you to have yes. you take him back? No, yes. That's, that's, that's okay. absurd. Mr. Ortiz, why don't you respond to that? Because that doesn't make that, any sense to me. That, that, it, it doesn't make sense to me either. I mean, if I would uh, ever have a uh, fallout with LaShonda and when we're not together no more, my mistake was already made with her. I don't need to go back there. When Divorce Court continues, LaShonda pushes her luck with Judge Lynn. You didn't even want the kid to come live with you when you two were married because you didn't want to be bothered. This woman no, is not... Was... If you interrupt me one more time, I'm going to send you right out of the back of this courtroom. <laughs> Divorce isn't easy. Call toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or visit our website at divorcecourt.com or become a fan at facebook.com slash divorcecourt. Divorce Court is back with the case of Luz Ortiz, who has full custody of her ex-husband Carlos's biological granddaughter and refuses to allow Carlos and LaShonda unsupervised visitation. But is Luz being unreasonable or realistically protective of the young child? Why would you now contend that she's not a good caregiver when you didn't even want to take care of your own flesh and blood? You say Mrs. Ortiz won't let you see your granddaughter. That is such Explain a lie. Explain that to me. Well, the situation is this. It's not just not wanting to see her. It's wanting to see her, us as a family. Spend me time. as a grandfather. I always with have a Hang on, time. just Miss Ortiz, please. Go ahead. time alone without Luce being there. Yeah. But Luce won't allow that. The she four has, of us. She has to be I, there. I, I have her best interest in heart. The four of you? Yeah, me, because you we have, have a child. baby, and so you want to be able to have the grandchild. Just for a couple of hours. Uh -huh. It's not an overnight. We don't even request overnight. We request several hours walking through the mall, uh, Go going the on park. carousel, uh, uh, get on rides or something like this, and bring her back safely, of course, and mm -hmm. secure her back to Luce. Is that true? Do they ask for just to take... Uh, no, they've only asked once, and I told them straight we out. We asked a couple Stop. of times. I have, on, I'll get I to have you. my granddaughter's best interest at heart. When I got, was given custody of my granddaughter, mm -hmm. I've always had her best interest at heart. Well, what he was not, not in her life. life. Mr. Ortiz, I he will get He was not to you. in her life, hardly he ever. He was always in her life. He was always hey, on the road. Hey, well, you're no, trying, no, 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 no. You're in here trying to convince me to get her to let you see a child because you're reasonable people. That's you right. can't even be quiet when I ask you to. She's got to remember. That, that, that does not support your position, okay? Well, okay? I won't get to you. All right. He did see his granddaughter even before he went to Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. Always with me around, of course, but he did see her. His complaint see. seems to be that you won't allow him to see the grandbaby without you being physically present. No, because I'll, the judge gave me guardianship and right. custody of her mm -hmm. because I've always had her best interest at Good heart. Enough. And I will not allow it at this time. Well, what are your wants, concerns? I think that because of the way everything went down, there was so much drama in her life that her being alone with them, I, I, I don't feel is the best interest for well, her. She just uh, respond to that. One time, for an instance, we went uh, to, to see uh, my granddaughter. It was my idea to say, let's pay a yeah, visit. Yeah, this is You two are terrible over there. You can't even let your man finish a sentence. Mm -hmm. Let him speak. <laughs> we had a situation, OK? I'm not going to call it as critical, but we went to see uh, the grandchild, my grandchild, uh, just out of the blues to see how she was doing. It was after, after school. And when we got there, the, the grandchild was not there. Our grandchild was not there, and she was, with uh, her she was visiting a, a neighbor, according to Luz. Now, these people can actually uh, hold my grandchild, and they have any kind. They don't have no interest whatsoever in terms of being relatives. And right. here we are. I'm a relative, and I like to have a couple of hours without. Well, Luz well being. that's interesting, Mr. Ortiz. You are a relative. She, you know, this is your son's child, correct? That's correct. Uh, you didn't even want custody. You didn't even want the kid to come live with you when you two were married because you didn't want to be bothered. This woman no, is not... Was... If you interrupt me one more time, I'm going to send you right out of the back of this courtroom. <laughs> you didn't even want to have the kid. You were going to let the child go into foster care before you would take it into your home. Why would you now contend that she's not a good caregiver when you didn't even want to take care of your own flesh and blood? Well, I didn't say that, that she's not a good uh, caregiver. 
What I am trying to say is at that moment, it was my sons responsible for that child. Now, I took it to the, to the, limit, to the limit so that we won't be held responsible for the child. Now, of course, we're not going to let a child go ahead and, and get lost in the system because that's a lot of children but get lost. But you were. No, she I was headed to, in the limit. to foster I didn't, care. I didn't let it happen. As you can see, I you supported didn't let it happen. Luce, too. You didn't let it happen. You was on the road when I went to pick her you, up. You, you don't accept and, and Ortiz, you don't recall what you told me in this courtroom. You told me you didn't want the baby. You told me that's why you gave custody of that baby to your ex-wife, and she's not even blood related to it. When divorce court continues, LaShonda claims Luz has a hidden agenda for not letting Carlos spend time with his granddaughter. I feel that Luz is racist. If you would like your case heard on divorce court, call us toll free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. And follow us on Twitter, at Divorce Court. Divorce Court returns with the case of Carlos Ortiz, who wants his ex-wife to forgive and forget so that he and his young girlfriend can move on with their lives. Now, Ms. Beckett, you have been wanting to say something this whole time. We're going to make everybody else be quiet and let you speak. Why do you think she won't let you two have the baby alone? Your Honor, I think it's really because of, of me. I, I feel that Luz is racist. I don't know now, how to say that. Excuse now, me. Hang, hang, yeah. on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> that's a that, laugh. Th that's a lightning charge. Because, why, why do you believe that? Because she always makes statements that she made this one statement that um, my, bra my baby brother go to a school and it's all mixed kids. Mm -hmm. And that's a very good school, but it's in the, in the hood, the, right. the ghetto. So she made a statement and said, well, I don't want nobody chasing after me because they believe that I'm going to um, buy drugs. And they, that, they... And that was happening. Stop. I believe that they're going to chase after me because I'm white. So she believed that... She believed that the black people is going to chase after her because they think that she's white and she's coming to buy drugs. Do you well, think she's I, racist? I believe, I believe that the racial color is not as strong, but I think that the influences of, of other family members towards Luz... We're looking at what family members are telling Luz. Don't let the baby go... With the babysitter. With the babysitter or with but, his but, 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 hang, hang on, hang on, hang and on. Let, let me say this. Let me say this, Ms. Beckett. And I, and I got to say this, you know, um, what you did was scandalous. Yeah, but, but, but hang on. <laughs> and I want you to remember what happened about your involvement. You didn't feel at all badly about sleeping with another woman's husband. Well, Your Honor, they was having problems before I even moved into the house. Mm -hmm. They was having problems. Did you, if did... it wasn't going to be me, it would have been someone else. <laughs> now, I didn't look happy. And let me tell you why I didn't look happy. I'm sure I've told you that. I'm going to tell you again. Every marriage has struggles. And you're not supposed to sleep with other people's husbands. It's just, it's just bad business. It's, yeah. it's just, it's, it, it's just wrong. And, and, and don't you see that, having done that, that Ms. Ortiz has some negative feelings towards you? Would you, I mean, don't you understand, accept, and appreciate that? Yeah, but that was the past. Let her, let her respond, and then I'll let you talk. Yeah, I understand, Your Honor, but that, that, that was the past now. We're, you know, we're looking at the future now. When divorce court continues, will Judge Lynn convince Luz to allow Carlos unsupervised visits with his own granddaughter? I think you're wrong keeping the baby from him. I'm not. I, no, no, no. I think you are. And, I, and I, I don't blame you on an emotional level because you're hurt. Be that as it may, I don't see anything that makes me believe that they have a bad environment. Divorce Court returns with the case of Carlos Ortiz, who says his divorce from Luz isn't working because she refuses to allow his girlfriend and him unsupervised time with his granddaughter. What do you do to make up for what you did at all in her direction? Have you done, have you, have you, no, have you written her a letter? Have you, have you, have no. you said, I'm sorry? Have no, you, I have not. Been. Have you made anything all easier for her? All they came back for her? is ask for favors left and right. What kind of favors? The favors, the favors. For instance, can you please pick us up and take us to my... 
Your Honor, him. that's I'll my father's house. I'll get to you. my father's house because uh, we're going to be staying there for about 14 days. Three days after that, they called me from another location asking for me to pick them up and bring them back to Miss Beckett's sister's house. What is your version of those events? Your Honor, this is what's going on. Yes, we've asked her to take us places because we didn't have a car when we first got to Florida. But we still have a friendship. We still have uh, a, a, a main body in this ordeal that's in between us. How do I get to see my grandchild if I don't ask her, he doesn't come understand. on over here okay. and meet us at this place? Okay. Ms. Ortiz, let me ask you One something. He's, say, he's saying something interesting. As tacky and trifling as they were, it seems to me that, and much to your credit, you have forgiven them and maintained a relationship with the two of them. Is that accurate? Yeah, well, that's how racist I am, that I still maintain a relationship <laughs> with them, you well, know? Regardless and that's of all because that, of my yeah. granddaughter. What happened two and a half years ago, mm -hmm. If we over it. We have to continue You're our over friendship. It. The question is, is we. she over it? Because nobody okay. hurt you. Okay. Well, you we want to work, Your Honor. We want to work with her to get over it. What? We want to work with her for her to get over it. Mrs. Ortiz, let me say this to you. I think you're wrong keeping the baby from him. I'm not. I, no, no, no. I think you are, and I, and I, I don't blame you on an emotional level because you're hurt. Be that as it may. I don't see anything that makes me believe that they have a bad environment, and I don't see any reason they why... They didn't even have a place to stay. I am speaking... Any reason why they wouldn't be permitted to take the baby to the park or anything like that. And I, I, I want you to put that baby's interest before your hurt. You want to sue him for sixty dollars? I just think that's silly. But I go know, ahead. It's silly. It's silly. But and, and I wouldn't do it except that he he agreed that he would. He called me frantically one day while I was picking up my granddaughter from school, and he said, "I'm short sixty bucks. I need I need to get the insurance deposit in so I can get the vehicle out of mm -hmm. the Inbound dealership." Out, yeah, huh? yeah. I have no problem paying the sixty bucks back. It, it was either or. It was either giving my 60 uh -uh. bucks back or there'll be other, like, cleaning the and pool. And you have no problem grass. paying the $60. It's $60. I have a pool right? man. You got a gig, right? You know. Correct. Uh, I have a pool Mrs. man. Mrs. Ortiz, you make sure that you put the rights of the children before you, any hurt or rights that you have. Just, I'm just... I've always... Blanket statement, blanket statement, and sometimes it feels one way when it's really another. Mr. Ortiz, I'm sorry that you don't get to see your granddaughter more than you can, but you kind of bought it when you didn't take the responsibility of, of taking her on. Ms. Beckett, uh, stay cool, stay calm. Okay. Never forget the wrong that you did when you deal with her, because that, that is what it is. And the fact that you're moving forward doesn't mean that um, you've made up for the past. $60 in favor of Mrs. Ortiz. It is so ordered. All right. Parties may leave the courtroom. Luz says she took Judge Lynn's advice to allow Carlos to see his granddaughter. On the Sunday following their divorce court appearance, she invited him to join his granddaughter and her in the park only five minutes from his house. After one and a half hours of waiting, she called him to find out if he was coming, and Carlos told her he'd seen them in the water park area, but was not prepared to join them and went home. Luz says she never has denied Carlos the right to see his granddaughter, but Carlos has never made an effort to see her. Rhonda and Mark have been dating for the past three years, and though both claim they're ready to take their relationship to the next level, Rhonda's faith won't allow premarital consummation, and Mark is growing increasingly impatient. When we kind of do our due, Mark wants to take it to a different level. He loves candy yams. I'm laying in the bed, sleep, next thing I know I got a yam going up my leg. But she chooses what she'll do and what she won't do. I mean, she's not hey, sexually man. adventurous uh -huh. the way she should be. Rhonda wants to save something for marriage, but Mark is ready to let it all hang out. Today, on Divorce Court Before Your Vows. All rise. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lynn Toller presiding. You may be seated. 
Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today to do one of my favorite things, which is a Before Your Vows session. I have before me Rhonda Dunwood and Mark Ridley. The two of you have been together for three years. You are not currently living together. You are considering whether or not you should get married. In fact, you have given me your marriage license and have given me permission to either return it to you should I think that marriage is something you should do or to tear it up if I feel that is ill-advised. I have also given you a compatibility test, which I found very entertaining. <laughs> and we're going to talk about that momentarily. But before we do, Ms. Dunwin, I'm going to start with you. Why don't you tell me why you love him but aren't quite sure? Well, first of all, I love him because we are compatible. We have mm -hmm. a lot in common. I'm here because of his insecurities. Okay. We, like you say, we don't live together. I choose not to live with Mark. Mark, you know I love you. But I choose not to live with him because of my moral values and my religious beliefs. Um, let me share with you. Mark's insecurities. I love you, dear. But Mark has gone to church with me. Of course, you know, mm -hmm. brothers and sisters, we all embrace one another. Mark wants to accuse me of the men in the church. They embrace me harder mm -hmm. and longer than they embrace, they embrace the other, other sisters. Yes. So there must be something going on exactly. between you. And he's claiming that's part of the reason why I don't want to move in with him, because of issues like that, which is not true. And this is what I'm trying to get him to believe. His insecurities, you know? Mm -hmm. Mark has a tendency, when we kind of do our due, Mark wants to take it to a different level, a higher level. Until our vows, it's not going to go any further, and that's part of our problems. That's part of him. Ms. Ms. Dunwood, whether you two get married or not, no matter what happens, I respect you for that. Yeah, thank I you. I think that, you know... Thank you. Some of us women got run over by the sexual revolution. Hello? It, 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 it became a thing that was expected and constant, and it, it, it became too available. And the next thing you know, we out there alone, That's hollering at the baby about. daddy, please give me some money, yes. all yes. of that. So yes. I respect yes. that. Yes. That, yes. That, yes. Thank exactly. you for that. Exactly. But see, one of the ways that he tries to lure me, for instance, once we share our fun, oh, uh -huh. Heavenly Father, once we share <laughs> our fun, uh, then, you know, this is what he does. Okay, I'm cleaned up, I'm showered, I want to go to sleep, get ready to start our day the uh -huh. next day. Okay, you know I'm talking real. He wants to bring, like, when I'm asleep, he wants to bring, like, potato salad to bed. He wants to put it on my back. Next thing I know, he's licking it off my back, eating it off of me, okay? He loves candy yams. I'm laying in the bed asleep. Next thing I know, I got a yam going up my leg, and he, gr he grudging all up on it. You know, he all over my leg with a candy yam. This is what I'm trying to talk to him about. These are things with him, and see, as far as our issues are concerned, now, I got to get up again and go shower all over again. I love him. I love sharing. But he takes it to a whole different Miss, extreme. Mr. Ridley, are you bringing a buffet to bed? Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, Your Honor, I, uh, I am the kind of man that's very, very um, sexually pervasive with her. I mean, look at her. She's beautiful. We have a great time. But candy yams? No. Come I'm on, now. So. Tell a the truth A little honey, now. maybe. A little honey. Uh, right. But not candy, yeah. Not, so you're just talking food selection, yeah, you not know, necessarily. Yeah, a little bit of some, something to have some fun with. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. we're talking with a lady that's very, very uh, vocally herself in bed, but she chooses what she'll do and what she won't do. I mean, she's not Amen. sexually adventurous uh -huh. the way she should be. Not till after the vows, sweetheart. Yeah. Not till after see, the vows. No, but see, but I'll try to help her about that. I say, listen, she wants the cow, but she doesn't want to do uh, the milk. Well, no, you would got that all confused. Uh, okay, I mean, no, that's what I have to reverse it for. No, no, she, you got that all confused. Let, me, let, let me back up a little bit oh. and get off this subject. Well, I want to hear about the meat locker. The, oh, my gracious. Well, yeah. Tell me what happened Tell there. Me. All right, so check this out. I'm in the grocery store. I'm in the grocery store, standing there, the butcher behind the window. I'm looking at the meat choices. Next thing I know, I hear the double flapping doors flap. Didn't pay it any mind, but I can hear the butcher say, uh, you can't come in here. No, the restroom's not here. I could hear that much. I didn't pay any attention. I figure somebody just went in the wrong door. Okay, next thing I know, the butcher is kind of getting a little belligerent, and I just figure, oh, somebody is getting, having enough. an issue. Mm -hmm. Lo and behold, I get grab my meat, I walk off, and I pass the double doors, and who's standing there, Mark? Who's standing now, there, why Mark? why am I there? Why? 
Why were you there? Why is he in there with the butcher? Obviously, she saw my car there. Okay, why not get out and confront me, talk to me, see me, wave your hand? I'm there to use the restroom. I went through the wrong door. And it just so happened that the meat guy was there. And you I, it just, just so happened, happened I was she there. showed up at she a meat She showed up, and I'm going, at a butcher why shop are you The same time you were in the meat locker. Right. There's no woman there. I was already that there. That shows you the insecurity. When divorce court before your vows continues, what's got Mark tongue-tied? I got my mom's car. I went around the back way. I rolled up on him, and now let me tell you what happened when I rolled up on him. I go to the, his window. He rolls it down. I said, Mark, what you doing here? He says, I, 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 Are you considering marriage but aren't sure if it's the right step? Call toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or visit our website at divorcecourt.com or become a fan at facebook.com slash divorcecourt. Divorce Court Before Your Vows is back with the case of Mark Ridley, who says his girlfriend Rhonda needs to be a bit more giving in the bedroom before he can say I do. But does Mark take his sexual freedom a little too far? We're cleaning the closet. What do I run across? Half nude photos of female in his home, okay? In his home. Speak on it, baby. You want to talk about it? I don't recall any Talk about it, hon. You know, you, like I said, you know, I don't that. Mr. Ridley, have you been faithful to her, th oh, to yes, her throughout the three Come years on. of your absolutely. engagement? No, no, no. Let me tell you absolutely. how unfaithful you know? he is, okay? Now, my mom, my mom lives a good five hours or so away. I drive and visit my mom, take care of some business out in Oakland. I'm at my mom's house, st stand up there, her big picture window, who I see drive by. <laughs> Am I stunned? It's Mark. Your Honor, I'm a businessman. My travel and my work takes me everywhere. Just happened to be on my mom's block. And I just happened to be there because she had not called me, told me that she had arrived at the place here. So I, being the nice, good, significant other that I should be, said, well, you know what, I'm in the city. I'll swing by. See, this is why we have issues. Let me tell you what good. he did. He parked thing. the car, okay? Uh -huh. I sat there in my mom's house and I watched him for hours in that car. Just sitting there. Just, he's just sitting there. So you know what I did? I got my mom's car. I went around the back way. I rolled up on him. And now let me tell you what happened when I rolled up on him. I go to the, his window. He rolls it down. I said, Mark, what you doing here? He says, I, 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 you know, he, he was trying to tell, this is what he character. claimed he I was trying her. to say. He said he was trying to say, I just came to surprise I her. I came, surprised her. What did he just say? You would, but you had been sitting out what there for hours. No, no, I, I couldn't be sitting there for seven hours because she would have to sit there for seven hours to know that. I, I got to my mom's house day before I saw the, the house. I came around the corner. I hugged her and kissed her and supported her endeavors. And... Uh, Ms. Mr. So Ridley, good. she said something in her papers that I, I understand completely, so I'm not even going to ask her about it. I'm just going to address it with you. Yes. She says that you use humor to deflect any serious issue. Without Obviously, a doubt. that is the case. Without Do you a see doubt. any need for you to be serious and, and have a meaningful conversation with her about the things she about which she's concerned? Your Honor, I'm very serious with her, and I do have... Um, my humorous moments as well as she, and we do laugh at each other, and we have, you know, a good time. I don't think oh. you've been serious yet. Yeah, yeah. No, been she has, uh, like, for instance, okay, she likes to show off, like I was saying, you know? She walked to the mall, we were at the mall together, and I stepped off to look at the window and do a little window shopping. And I come back, she's down there, bent down like this, looking behind her. And I'm going, what are you looking for? And she says, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I was just fixing my shoes, tying my shoes. I said, baby, look at your boots. You're wearing boots. They don't have no shoe strings. No, he's She's wrong. She's showing up for me. He is wrong with that. Oh, no. she was giving oh, him a no, shoe. No, no, she she had had I know. Okay. I had Can I get my the amen on that? She had a bunch of milk. Okay. Right. I had my pants in my boots, and I was just stretched. Uh, um, straighten up the pant legs. See, this is what I'm talking about, the insecurity Security. with him. I can't Some walk out and talk. I can't, I can't, I can't, right. I can't do nothing. Man. He I'm tries confident. to find fault I'm with I'm a world it. traveler. I have a beautiful lady. Obviously, I'm not insecure. Hang on, hang on, Mr. Ridley. What are your concerns about her? Because we've been talking about well, you a lot. Well, trust issue. You know, I mean, I don't want to live my life with someone constantly wondering if I'm cheating. If you know, he's my cheating. word is my bond. I'm good at what I say. I do what I say. And she basically knows that, but it's her lack of security. Well, my lack of security. I don't want to interrupt. Let me interrupt and you for a second, hon. 
because you're wrong. Yeah. Let me tell you about some photos that I found in his home. I've been, been talking to Mark so much about cleaning out his closet. Now, we're cleaning the closet. What do I run across? Half nude photos of female in his home, okay? In his home. Speak on it, baby. You want to talk about it? I don't recall Talk saying, about it, hon. And you know, like I said, you know, I, I, any of that? I don't. I, I'm really appalled. Judge, he said the sister came over there. She's half naked there mm. in the photo. And he tells me she came over there to wrap Christmas gifts. <laughs> Speak Did say on that? it. Uh, Your Honor, all I can say is drugs is a dangerous thing. Oh, oh, ain't that nothing. See I'm how accused doing? of being a drug addict. See, now, now, that's why I went here. That's some stuff she didn't make up. That's some stuff okay. you said. When Divorce Court Before Your Vows continues, what's got Rhonda shouting amen? She would walk in the door kissing me from head to toe and praising God for the glorious opportunity. <laughs> if you would like your case heard on Divorce Court, call us toll free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com and follow us on Twitter at Divorce Court. Divorce Court Before Your Vows returns with the case of Rhonda Dunwood, who contends her boyfriend Mark treats their relationship like it's a joke. But will Rhonda have the last laugh if the couple exchanges vows? I said, is there something your intended should probably know before you marry them that they don't know about? And you said the following. I only plan to work five more years, though. <laughs> that will be a surprise. I gave you my... A compatibility test. Okay. And I knew who you were before you showed up. See? There you go. Uh, everything, Speak you know, on it. It, you didn't have one serious answer in here. <laughs> you said if you would change one thing about your intended, what would it be? She would walk in the door kissing me from head to toe and praising God for the glorious opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what's wrong with that, Your Honor? Now, 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 that was that, and, and I will say this. It didn't, it told me a lot about how you do. It, 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 it verified her statement about you deflecting seriousness with humor. Amen. It does indicate that you do have a sense of humor. It's a little off, that, but hello. it's there. Hello. And humor is necessary in marriage. All Absolutely. Right. Humor is necessary in marriage. You took it a little more seriously. You said one thing I, I, I feel the need to repeat. I said, is there something your intended should probably know before you marry them that they don't know about? And you said the following. He knows enough to continue towards marriage. I only plan to work five more years, though. <laughs> that will be a surprise. Yeah, that, that, uh, that uh, affected me. <laughs> that affected me deeply, Your Honor, because I'm not sure how she sees me now. Am I the sugar daddy? Am I yeah, you're the, the gift giver daddy. of life you the gift at this giver. moment? I mean, she's young, she's beautiful, both your hands, both hands work, right? I think she's, she's still very capable, but right. I don't know if she has these motives that I am not familiar with, you know? That's something that it's, it's news to my ears. Mark, right? where are okay. you going? It's what do you want out of marriage? You, you're concerned that she's not willing to do what makes a marriage work. Speak and what I want to know is, what do you believe is necessary for a successful marriage. Yeah, Anna, I want to well, know. Hang yes. on, hang on. Well, first, you do have to have humor, trust, humor, respect. Humor, trust, respect. You have to be capable of bonding. And I want that done without distrust. When Divorce Court Before Your Vows continues, how much is Mark hiding behind his mask of humor? What in the world? Girl, if I could get her to just play a little bit. Let me, let me show you what I like her to do. See, Since she's talking about this is what I'm up against. He loves to play Batman. Divorce Court Before Your Vows returns with the case of Rhonda Dunwood and Mark Ridley, who after three years of dating are asking Judge Lynn if they should say I do. We, we've, we've talked about the things that we're concerned about, but I need you, you to tell me why you believe she might be the woman of your dreams. Because we do have fun. In spite of all of this, and in spite of what she says, you know, which they're not really true. I know it's made up 
a little bit in our head, but I'll deal with that. Um, we do have a good time. And I respect her. Mm -hmm. She's beautiful. And I believe that she could possibly be it if she comes off some of those old antiquated ways. You know? I mean, Mr. we need to Ms. develop Ms. a certain Ms. amount Mr. of trust. Mr. Ridley? That was the saddest. This is why I Thank love her. You. I've heard in quite some time, Thank and I've heard you. some sad hurt. ones here. Your answer hurt. was generic. Well, I do care I'm going to give you another chance. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, uh, now, one more time. One more again. Why her? Oh, she makes me feel good. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, uh, I love looking at her. She's a very passionate person. And as I say, we do have fun. And I believe deep down she's very morally and she's spiritually connected. Mm -hmm. um, you know. Do you love her? Yes, I love her. You know, I do. But I, I know I haven't pushed it to that degree because of the reservations. And once I give, I give completely. And I want to be able to give completely. And I know that my reservations, just like us moving together, that won't happen until that ring is on her finger. I'm not playing house. Mm -hmm. You know? So. And it, it, those you things respect can happen. that, don't you? Pardon? You respect that, don't I do. you? And I, she has to respect it for me. Those are my decisions. She wanted to move in. I said, no, no. Oh, Mark. No, 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 no. Mark, I was with you till then. No, 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 no. Ms. 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 Dunwood, why don't you tell me she what it is she about him that you love? Why well, is un he the man until that you're did. considering marrying? I love Mark. I truly do, from the bottom of my heart. We are compatible. Um, we do have that sense of caring for mm -hmm. one another. Um, he does have my back in time of need. And I do support and have his back as well. We have spoken about future values together, mm -hmm. and we do share future values. The only thing that I will say at this point is our sexual preferences. That's the only mishap that we really do have right now, besides the fact that he feels as though he what can. What in the world? Your Honor, if I could get her to just play Are a little bit. Let me, let, me, let me show you what I like her to do. See, Since she's talking about sex. This is friend. what I'm up against. He loves to play Batman. Let her know. <laughs> when he wants to get involved, this is what I have to deal with. <laughs> or oh, just a little fun <laughs> having fun here with we go, it. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. In the beginning, I thought you were funny. Now I just think you're weird. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I don't know. <laughs> And, uh, and I... I don't know how deep the weird really goes. I, I saw your numbers and your statistics, and I was saying, mm, this is a couple we can get together and have get married. But now I just think you're so odd mm. that I really just can't you go want me to turn there. this up here? I, 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 you just, I, you know, this? had he taken this a little more seriously, I might have been able to give you an answer. You but know. I can't do that at this time. I'm not going to tear up your license, but I am just going to walk off with it. This matter is adjourned. <laughs> oh. Thank you, Honor. All rise. Parties may leave the courtroom. Mark. It's me and you, right? We're going to make it work. Sure, thing sound weird. We're going to make it work, right? No, I'm not. Come on, Mark. Yeah, we're going to make it work. All right. You love me? Yeah. I love you. Uh, All right. Tell the next people. Bye-bye. I just feel like when this lady calls his phone, like, they didn't used to call before, or like, the, the Facebook or the text messaging and just different things, like, oh, well, I'm coming here. I know how women are. She's the judge who gives rules on the law and life. She's intense with common sense. She's Judge Lynn Toller on Divorce Court, where real couples deal with real life. 31-year-old Tiffany met 51-year-old Muhammad six years ago at a nightclub. Though Muhammad was still married, the two struck up a lightning fast friendship, and once Muhammad's divorce was final, he and Tiffany leapt into a serious relationship, culminating in I Do three years ago. But now she claims he's changed and doesn't pamper her the way he once did. And he asserts she's insecure and money hungry. Money was never an issue. He promised me a Porsche. He promised me a new house. She thought I was a bouncer at the club at the time until I was walking out of the office and she realized I was the owner. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden, hi. She lit up. Yeah, she lit up. <laughs> That is and, so and like a gold digger type thing. Muhammad wants to know if this marriage can be saved today on Divorce Court. All rise. Court is now in session. 
The Honorable Judge Lynn Toller presiding. You may be seated. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here today with Tiffany Michael and Mohammed Hamoud. Uh, Ms. Michael and Mr. Hamoud, you two have been married for three years. You don't have any children together, uh, but you have two children from a previous relationship that are, that are older now. You don't want to be married anymore. And Ms. Michael, you are seeking $42,000 in transitional support from Mr. Hamoud, and we will resolve those issues uh, later on in the proceeding. Before we do, however, I'm going to start with you, Ms. Michael. Why don't you tell me a little bit about your relationship and why we're here in divorce court today? We met. He owned a nightclub, and he was married at the time. Mm -hmm. I was in Ohio. He was in Michigan, and I would always go up to his nightclub and just, you know, see him, hang out with him. Six years, we stayed in touch with each other. He now was how great. much in touch were you? No, nothing. No nothing, touching. No touching. No, no, okay. Just in touch. She didn't break up our marriage or anything oh, okay, like that. Okay, okay, okay. No, Just no. check it. Go no. ahead. He was going through a divorce at the time anyway. He was on the verge of getting a divorce. Right. But he was a great guy. He would always come to Ohio. He would always take me shopping. He would, it was always about Tiffany. What's your dreams? What's your ambition? Mm -hmm. Everything. I was a priority. And then things changed. They just slowly changed. It was great. Slowly changed, or was it abrupt once the ideals were exchanged? No, it wasn't abrupt. It just, I just noticed a change. You can feel it. It's a woman's intuition. Can you give me an example of some of the things that you felt differently about after marriage? Okay, for example, when I would call him when we, like the first year of our marriage, when I would give him a call, and he would always answer his phone. Now, he doesn't answer the phone. He's on the roof. Like, you're always on the roof? You live on the roof. Like, seriously, answer my phone calls. Never a problem. Money was never an issue. He promised me a Porsche. He promised me a new house. He just, every, it was always about Tiffany. Anything under the sun that I wanted, it was always within my reach because mm -hmm. he said he would give me the world. He said he would give me everything. And, you know, just answering, a, answering the phone call, you're my husband. You're supposed to answer she's, the she's, Mr. Hamu, what just, would you like to say? She's very insecure. She's very insecure. If I'm at work, I'm working three jobs now, trying to keep up with her spending. Mm -hmm. And um, he's trying to she's, make. She's a little high maintenance. Yes, I, I, yes, I, yes, she told yes, that on herself yes, already. Yes, ma'am, she is. She's a little high maintenance. Very, very high. No, she, no Miss, Miss, Miss Mike, I didn't I let him up interrupt you, and I will not allow you to interrupt him. Go sorry. ahead, Mr. Hamoud. The way she met me at the the club was she thought she thought I was a bouncer at the club at the time until I was walking out of the office and she realized I was the owner. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden, hi. She lit up. Yeah, she lit up. And <laughs> that then, is so... And like a gold digger type thing. I really didn't think of anything about it at the time, mm -hmm. but now the more things come around, the more I see it. Okay. And Talk to me about, we're going to get to that, because that is a huge issue, the financial things, because it's, you know, she had a long conversation over here. She only said one thing that was not money related, and that was about the phone calls. He says, she says, in the beginning of your marriage, no matter what you were doing, you would stop what you were doing and talk to her on the phone, and then that slowly dissipated. What is your response to that? Uh, Ma'am, at that time, uh, uh, the construction business was really good at that mm -hmm. time. I've had employees, and I would pay them, and they would work, and, and I was there on the job just supervising at that time. Mm -hmm. But after the economic crash, I had to Tough, go to work. Yeah. I had to go to work. And now it's like when I'm on a roof or I'm, I'm working, um, You're it's, working. Hard for me, it's hard for me to answer the phone. Uh, in fact, I did get earphones for my, uh, you know, hands-free earphones, so I, would, I can talk to her as I'm working. How often do you call him? A lot. 50 times uh, a day. No, 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 no. How, how often do you call him? I do call him a lot, but I just, I need a number. Give me a range. 50 What's the ball? A maybe a 50, t maybe 10 times. Maybe. A day. Be more and than what that. do you want? I just want to talk to him. <laughs> what do you do during the day? Well, during the day, I don't do much, but at night, I come to the gym and I, I teach fitness classes. I See. personal train. Maybe you need to get a hobby so you can not call him all day. And she, I built what does she want when she calls you? Uh, just, hey, like she what's said, going just on? To, just to talk. See, I mean, give me the price of tomatoes. Yeah, just, sometimes. just whatever. You know. But you know See, what? I, mean, I, I, I built her a gym. I mean, I built her a cardio room at my gym, so she knows where I'm at. And did she's you there. Do that? 
Yes. Did he do that? And he's a great guy for that, but I just feel like he would just do so much in the beginning as far as making me a priority, and I don't feel like I'm a priority. And then I don't understand what he's not doing now. I don't get it. He just called me a gold digger. I'm not a gold digger. <laughs> well, well now, now, hang on. I'm gonna decide that in a minute. When Divorce Court continues, is Muhammad the genuinely good guy he appears to be? I have all his passcodes to his Facebook, his cell phone, everything. And I check his, I check his Facebook and like there are women talking to him. Everyone warned you about marrying your mate. If divorce is the only solution, call toll free at 1-877-311-2222 or visit our website at divorcecourt.com or become a fan at facebook.com slash divorcecourt. Divorce Court is back with the case of Tiffany Michael, who claims her husband made false promises to her at the start of their marriage. But is Tiffany being selfish and unreasonable? I don't understand how you could have a good looking guy who thinks the sun rises and sets in your eyes. I don't understand what it is you think you deserve that is better than that. Give me something concrete that he once did, but no longer does, that makes you feel neglected. I have all his passcodes to his Facebook, his cell phone, everything. And I check his, I check his Facebook, and like there are women talking to him. He didn't do that in the beginning. Now yeah. he's doing it well, now. Well, what kind of things are these women saying? Like this, this, this girl that this chick that he knows from this somewhere yeah she likes everything on his page like she likes everything on your page and so i start talking to her making her think that i was him and she's just he's telling her about my cardio class like yeah you should work out with my wife and she's like no i want to work out with you laugh la, la, ha 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 and but how is now, now wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute <laughs> this man is on facebook with some random chick we don't know what she's up to but all we know for sure is he's trying to get you business from her. Why is he bad guy for that? Because it was it's other situations where when he owned the nightclub, because we just let the nightclub go about, I mean, well, a couple of years ago, he had some city worker call his phone. He said, oh, this lady hooks me up with mm -hmm. my permits and stuff, so I'm gonna invite her out to the nightclub. Someone else runs the, the nightclub when, I mean, they run those parties. They do all that stuff. So why is she calling your phone? So why call her man, back? Like, she, it's like little things like that. Like She where, knows everything I do. I mean, she took the phone out of my hand and called this lady back and said, starts like embarrassing me. Uh, why are you calling my husband? Why are you doing this? Embarrassing the lady. And I do business with her. Right. And she works at she's, Let she's a city Let me explain official. business to you, Ms. Michael. When you're talking to somebody that you need to get permits from and is very important, they want to talk to the head honcho. They want to talk to the big man. He's trying to make money, so he doesn't sing, send the junior people. If he needs something from somebody, he shows himself. That shows her respect. That gets him what he wants. It's called business, Ms. Michael. It's adult <laughs> thing. She, she's, a, she's a beautiful young lady. Beautiful young lady. Look at her. I mean... She's gorgeous. But I just feel like I know she, how we met. And you know, he was going through a divorce and he was having some issues. And you know, we've been having our issues. And then you know, know what kind of issues are you having? I just feel like when this lady calls his phone, like they didn't used to call before, or like the, the Facebook or the text messaging and just different things like, oh, well, I'm coming here. I know how women are. How many different levels of foolishness can you engage in? <laughs> I don't understand how you could have a good-looking guy who thinks the sun rises and sets in your eyes, who works like a dog through good times and bad, who builds a space in his gym so you can practice your business, who talks to his other clients about going to you so you can have more money. I don't understand what it is you think you deserve that is better than that. I mean, what have you brought to the table? Cute. What do you bring to his table? I do everything he had. He needs me to do with the construction company. I do. I. I'm there with the gym. I go and open it up. Sometimes I'll close it up. I'm great with the kids. The kids are. I don't call them stepchildren. I call them bonus children. And I just feel like I'm there for him, totally. 
and 100% and all I do is I call you and you don't answer the phone, I don't feel like that's fair. And I feel like it's a lot of double standards. There's things I like to do. There's things... Explain the double standards to me. Okay, for example, just a couple of days ago, I went and bought a pair of shoes. He was with me, you know, we were shopping. He hates it, but he will go with me. And I just, okay. Now the man has sprouted <laughs> angel wings. What do you mean? <laughs> I've been married 23 years. My husband hasn't gone shopping with me yet. <laughs> when Divorce Court continues, will Tiffany ever strike gold? I have a Mercedes. I wanted a Porsche. I mean a Porsche. My bad. <laughs> My fault. I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. If you would like your case heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com and follow us on Twitter at Divorce Court. Divorce Court returns with the case of Tiffany Michael, who says she wants a divorce from her husband because he refuses to start a family with her. But is Tiffany ready for motherhood? I do understand you do want I children want of your own. And uh, Mr. Hamoud, did you did you discuss that with her? Yes, ma'am, I did. It's a legitimate desire. Did yes, you ma yes, did you did. say that you would accommodate her in that regard? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, I did. What are you gonna do? Uh, well, here's here's my thing. I grew up without a father. My father died when when I was six. Right. And I, I would hate to bring a child into this world with us having troubles like this, and my child would have to try to grow up without a father. And I, I, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that to my children. He's trying to make me out to be a bad person. Oh, he... Listen, you've been talking 80% to his 20%. Your problem is you. <laughs> How long were you married when... when the trouble started? How... how... How long was it good? It was good for, I mean, all the, the six years, anything I wanted. Like, if I said I wanted, you know, new furniture, new laptop, he would always, even if I said I just wanted flowers, he would just Did, send did them you hear what me. you just said? He said, we've been arguing the marriage hasn't been good. And I said, how long has the marriage not been good? And you talked about all the material things that he had gotten you. Not, not about arguing, not about the kids, not about conversations that you didn't have, or feelings that he hasn't been able to express, but you started talking, itemizing those things that you got, and hence, that hence made the relationship good. If the money had kept flowing, if you had a Mercedes and an addition on the house, we wouldn't be here, right? I have a Mercedes. I wanted a Porsche. I mean, a Porsche. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> My fault. <laughs> I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. When Divorce Court continues, Judge Lynn shows Tiffany some tough love. Quit calling that man 10 times a day. He's trying to work to bring you all the stuff that you want. He has the right not to be bothered, and you don't have the right to be entertained 24-7, 365. It just doesn't work like that. Divorce Court returns with the case of Mohammed Hamoud, who is in court today asking if his marriage can be saved. You still love her, Mr. Hamoud, don't you? Yes, ma'am, I always have. You want it to work out, don't you? Yes, ma'am. If I had the power, I'd clone you and sell you. <laughs> you're a wonderful guy. Thank you very much, ma'am. You're, you're, you're a quiet, nice, wonderful guy. Thank you very much. Thank you. I try. You'd be the biggest fool this side of the Mississippi if you <laughs> let this man go. You have to work for the things you want. You have to sacrifice for the things you want. He doesn't want to have kids with you because he doesn't think you're quite up to the job. He doesn't think that the marriage is a stable and a good one. He's beginning to see that as the money wears down, your love is wearing out, and he doesn't want to bring a child into that. If you want to have children with him, you have to show him that you are worthy to be the mother of his children. The mother of his children. <laughs> the mother of his children does not keep her hand out saying, I want. The mother of his children must take our hands and embrace. 
and I don't think you're capable of that. If you want what you really want, then you have to show him you're a grown woman and not a little girl with his hand in his pocket. Quit calling that man 10 times a day. He's trying to work to bring you all the stuff that you want. He has the right not to be bothered, and you don't have the right to be entertained 24-7, 365. It just doesn't work like that. You have to prove that you are capable of having children. You have to prove that you are woman enough. And when I mean woman enough, I mean have the ability to sacrifice, to do without, to not get what you want. Motherhood don't Porsche. Motherhood SUVs. It's, it's, that's what it is. Did anything I say make any sense to you, Ms. Michael? I still feel strong about how I feel. I, I just think that, you know, it was a lot of false promises, and he knew how I was, and I didn't lie to him. I'm doing you the biggest favor anybody has ever done you by telling you not to leave this man. I'm doing the biggest favor that anybody has ever done for you by telling you to grow your heart and to, and to pull back your hand. That's what I'm doing. I'm doing you the biggest He's fantastic. And you can't do any better. You can't. You just can't. Brad Pitt's taken, that's it. <laughs> oh, I do like you so. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. You still want her, don't you? She, she's, a good, she's a good person inside. She really is. You just got to get it out of her. I'm going to give you my book. It's called Making Marriage Work. It talks about what, it, what a wife does. It talks about what a husband does. It talks about what it takes to be married. And married isn't just giving and, giving and money and all this. It talks about all the stuff you need to do. You do that stuff, he'll give you those children, and eventually, you'll, once the children get, get, get grown, you'll get your Porsche and all of that. <laughs> But he loves you, and he must love you for a reason. I'm not going to give you anything, because that $42,000 will be the worst investment you've ever made in your life. I'm giving you the obligation, the duty, to try to make it work out with this guy, because he's going to meet you more than halfway. There will be no recovery in this matter. It is so weird. All rise. Parties may leave the courtroom. Tiffany says being on the show was a real eye-opener. She says she finally understood where Muhammad was coming from and claims the two have vowed to work things out. Muhammad says he was glad the judge got through to Tiffany. He says the relationship is stronger now, but says he still can't say no to Tiffany. Muhammad has put the Mercedes up for sale and plans on buying Tiffany the Porsche as promised. <laughs>